What I love to do is introduce the right people to the right people, assemble the smartest people I can think of or reach out to to carry that conversation, and that's exactly what I've done today. Please give my panel a round of applause. Welcome. Okay, guys, Jay Martin here, CEO of Cambridge House, and I'm joined right now by Kai Huang, the co-founder and director of a company I'm really excited about, Just Kitchen. Kai, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on the show, Jay. Yeah, well, thanks so much for making the time because, you know, a few months ago, I had Just Kitchen CEO on, Jason Chen, because I had built a big position in Just Kitchen. I was really excited about the business. And it seemed to me like a pretty uncrowded bet into a massive opportunity. I hadn't seen many comparable invest any comparable investment opportunities in the food sector. The response to that video we did with Jason was phenomenal. And you know, the lovely part about that is that any of my subscribers who built a position at that point have now been handsomely rewarded. Um, I haven't sold a share because I think you guys are just getting started. So why don't we start with like a super high level and then I want to get into the team a little bit who's building this because this is a, a killer team of executioners that you've got on the board here. But for anyone who didn't watch the first interview, isn't familiar with Just Kitchen, what is Just Kitchen, Kai? Yeah, so Just Kitchen is a um, you know delivery only uh, food business. Um, think, uh, you know, Uber Eats and, you know, and how that's grown. Um, they're the layer in between Uber Eats and, and, and DoorDash, the layer that delivers the food. Just Kitchen is the one that prepares the food and creates, creates the food. And so they own the brands and they operate the kitchens, actually, that, um, that, that prepares and, and, and then serves the food. And what I loved about it, so we're talking about like the, it, this is the ghost kitchen concept, right? It's, a, it's essentially a restaurant with no front end that no patron will ever visit. And you guys just crank out delivery only meals. But the, the key things here that you don't have front end staff, you, you don't have the main pain points that restaurant businesses have, right? You don't have front end staff turnover. You don't have to pay a premium to be on front street and get that walk by traffic. And then what was most striking to me is what you just said, you own the brands, but the brands are just digital. They're just virtual brands. Right. So a, B testing brands, having seven, eight <laughs> brands live in one ghost kitchen location. You can, you can accomplish all of that without the hard costs associated in the restaurant sector. That's right. And because we operate our own kitchens, um, rather than rent out other kitchens, we can actually go wherever we want, wherever we can open a kitchen. We don't have to wait for somebody else to open a kitchen before we can operate in those um, territories. Okay. So before we get into the geography, because I know you positioned yourselves in very population dense geographic locations like Taiwan and Hong Kong to begin. I know you're looking at the Philippines, Singapore, and the US. Yeah. Um, what turned my head really at the beginning was your team. Now I had Jason Chen on the CEO of Just Kitchen and he's put in, what is it, two and a half decades as an executive in the restaurant business and brings that expertise. But in terms of company building, uh, maybe we'll go to Kent Wu, your COO to begin. Um, I think he's built and sold three companies in the past, founder of a fourth. But uh, how, talk to me about Kent. How did you meet Kent and what's the role that he plays in Just Kitchen? Yeah, Kent's uh, fantastic. You know, as you said, he's the COO and he, what he really brings is the digital side of it. So Jason comes from, the CEO comes from the F&B side. Um, so he's got a deep understanding of uh, the F&B industry and how it works and how you how you make money in that business, right? And Kent has the digital side. He started three companies, um, online e-commerce companies. And so what he brings to the table is, well, how do we market, sell, and deliver and delight customers um, through you know, an, an online service? Um, and so that's where I think the, the great match is between the two. Okay. And then yourself, you're the co-founder of a company called Red Octane. And if people don't know who Red Octane is, you, you will if I say they were the publisher of a video game called Guitar Hero that was created under your leadership and eventually sold, sold to Activision, correct? That is correct. Right. And this is a multi-billion dollar franchise, this game that, that you created. So, you know, I have to assume after a win like that, the opportunities that land on your desk are pretty numerous and pretty attractive. 
So, I mean, we talked about what Just Kitchen is, but what do you, why did you gravitate as a director towards this company? Why do you have so much skin in the game? And what do you see in the future that makes you excited? Yeah, um, you know, as a, I call myself a serial entrepreneur, I just love building companies. And I'll take a step back really quickly Please. Um, from Just Kitchen. And I've been looking at this food delivery space for probably close to four years now. And it's fascinated me. And the reason it's fascinated me is um, as I evaluated it, I looked at it as um, analogous to Internet 1.0. And Internet 1.0 or 0 0.1, um, I think of it in three layers. So you had the first layer was the infrastructure layer. You needed the Internet infrastructure for this whole Internet thing to happen, right? And then the second layer was the delivery layer. So think companies like FedEx and UPS. They had to be there to deliver stuff. And then the third layer was the brains. So the brands were allowed to be created because of the infrastructure and the delivery companies. Sure. And so all of a sudden you had brands um, like Amazon that never had a physical retail store, right? And mm -hmm. so the entire internet 1.0 exploded and an economy was built around that um, because of these three things. And so when I looked at food, I looked at it the same way. The infrastructure to me are the ghost kitchens, right? So without the ghost kitchens, these dark kitchens that operate and, you know, rent out to restaurants or, or delivery only restaurants um, or deli delivery only services, um, you couldn't operate. So the ghost kitchens are the infrastructure. The delivery companies sprung up new as well, right? right. So the DoorDashes, the Uber Eats, the Deliveroo's, the Food Pandas, right? Without them, none of this food delivery could happen because FedEx and UPS could never do something like this, right? Sure, yeah. And then, so the third layer on top of that is the brands. So as I looked at it, who's gonna be the next McDonald's without ever having a physical retail store, just like Amazon? Right. And so in my mind, hmm. it's gonna be exactly the same thing, right? And so that's what I loved about this entire business. And what's unique coming back to Just Kitchen is that they don't just do one of those layers. What I think was critical when we started was that we worked, I won't say it was a full stack, but it was most of the stack, right? We did the kitchens ourselves as the infrastructure. We didn't do the delivery because there were plenty of companies that were doing the delivery. Yeah. But now we're creating brands. And so I think there's an opportunity for Just Kitchen to really take advantage of that. And it's... It, it's one of the few, perhaps the only um, companies right now that are operating on that multiple stack level, right? Most companies in this food delivery space and this sort of new world of, of, of food are only doing one of those. Um, and so Just Kitchen's working on multiple layers. And I think that gives us a, a little bit more flexibility. And we have the flexibility if we decide to go into a new territory or, or, or new opportunity to say, oh, well, we don't need to do the infrastructure that goes kitchens because somebody's already doing that. But we also have the flexibility to say, oh, we want to go here. No one's doing that. Well, we have the expertise to do that. We're going to do that ourselves, right? Whereas most other companies cannot. So again, you know, that's what attracted me to this opportunity, right? Internet 1.0, I think there's going to be a food 1.0, and I think there's going to be a huge economy that grows around it. And I think we're already starting to see a lot of that. But I do think that there's still a long, long way to go, right? Yeah. That's had 20 years to grow, 20 plus years to grow now. Um, mm. Food delivery, imagine what it's going to be like in 20, 20 years. Yeah, that's a great analogy. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah. Okay, that puts, a, but it puts it in perspective. Now, uh, when you phrase it like that, immediately I'm thinking about, okay, so I, I feel like Just Kitchen has some first mover advantage, but are you seeing competitors enter the field yet? Or is this to come? Or what's the competitive landscape like? I think there are definitely competitors that are starting and starting to try, right? Part okay. of it, maybe they've seen us do it at Just Kitchen and maybe they're, they're trying it themselves. Hmm. What I think is pretty unique about Just Kitchen is that we've got that marriage of traditional F&B industry that Jason has really deep, deep experience and, you know, great staff that, that we've hired around that. 
and then a staff um, like Kent um, and Mark, our CTO, and you know people who have also this digital experience, right? And um, most people that are new to this, most companies that are new to this space really just come at it from a digital side, right? They're tech people who are coming into this business, the food business. Um, and, and so they lack that deep F and B knowledge. Well, how do I deliver actually good tasting food? How do I create menus that people are going to love? How do I create the next brand that's going to be like a McDonald's and how do I market the crap out of it? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I think that's where just kitchen is uniquely positioned. Very much so. Okay. Now I, I know you're a co-founder and the role you play is director. So more of an advisory role, but I'd love you to blue sky with me for a little bit. You know, what's the, what's the potential upside look like when you think 10 years down the road, what's just kitchen doing, take it from a geographic perspective or whatever you want to. Yeah. I think there are multiple axes and that's what I think, you know, the opportunities for just kitchen are, are, are still wide, wide open. Right. There's geography, as you said, and just kitchen started in Taiwan. Um, and, and now is the leader in Taiwan. Um, we're expanding to Hong Kong, um, expanding to Singapore, expanding to the Philippines. And by end of this year, we, or or early next year, we'll be expanding to the United States. Mm. So there's geographic expansion. And I think that alone could be already is a massive opportunity. But in addition to that, what's unique again about Just Kitchen and this deep F and B background is that we're out to create our own brands. So, and, and, and we've got close to 20 brands right now that we've created. What's, what's great about creating your, your own brands, of course, is um, you know, higher margins, right? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're building our own McDonald's here. Mm. And we're learning in every country because, you know, it, it, McDonald's is great because they create a product that appeals on a global level, right? But there are very few companies that can do that. Um, and so where I think Just Kitchen is uniquely positioned, at least right now, is that we're the first out there, we're the first mover out there, and we're learning. We're figuring out, you know, what is, what's going to be that food that everybody likes on a global level. Mm. And as soon as we figure that out, we could, like Internet 1.0, right? Um, as soon as you have a concept, you can scale it really quickly. Unlike traditional retail, where you got to go one store at a time, brick and mortar, yeah, Amazon could scale immediately. With this just kitchen business, once we figure out what those those brands are, what those flavor profiles that people like globally might be, mm-hmm. we could literally scale up, you know, really, really quickly. Rather than go one brick and mortar store, you know, and slog it out. Um, that way. So right. that's where right. I think is really interesting. We've already got 20 brands. We're learning, we're creating more every day. Um, and I think, you know, there's a huge opportunity to, 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 to tap, not even just create one McDonald's, but, you know, if we're lucky to create two or three or four of them. Yeah, right, right, right. And it goes without saying the reason you're choosing, the reason you launched in Taiwan, expanded to Hong Kong, looking at the Philippines, Singapore is because of the density of the population, correct? And that just comes down to volume of meals served from the ghost kitchen, right? That is correct. So if we look at, you know, why Southeast Asia, you know, is such a great place um, for just kitchen to to expand to initially, um, as you said, Jay, it is just very dense um, and the costs are lower. So that means our margins are higher. Your labor costs. So the cost of of labor, the cost of real estate, the cost of everything is lower. So yeah. that allows us to create um, um, a business where our margins are, you know, much more expanded. You've got the high density, so you've got higher volume, um, and we also have higher frequency, so we can learn a lot quicker. You know, we can launch a brand literally within two weeks, figure out whether it's going to work, test it, right? See see what the opinion is, and then you know, either expand it if it's working or adapt or create it or perhaps even kill it. Yeah, 100%. There it is. Okay. Look, Kai, it's been great getting to know you a little bit. You know, when I had Jason on, he he was singing your praises. And so I'm happy that you're able to make the time to come on the show and get in front of my audience and just 
give us a little bit of an update because like I said, when I had Jason on, it would have been four months ago or so, I was very excited about the story and, and built, you know, quite a large position for my portfolio. And, and I love then I never tell my audience what to buy, but I tell them what I buy and I tell them why. And, uh, anybody who followed me down that path has been, like I said, very rewarded, but I think the story is just getting started. And so it's one we're going to keep covering here on the channel. So I appreciate your time, appreciate coming on and, uh, look forward to doing it again. Great. I appreciate you having me on the show. All right. As always, if you enjoyed this content, please hit subscribe. I'd love to have you on the team. And if you want to take the next step and go a bit deeper with my content, I publish a free weekly newsletter every Friday where I debrief my portfolio. I distill the top lessons I've uncovered from the guests I've had on this show every week. And I talk about sectors and industries that I think are poised to move, areas I'm looking for opportunity and places that I'm allocating capital. I love writing it. We publish every Friday. The link is right beneath this video. Love to have you join the tribe.